Blessings and shalom, brothers and sisters. All glory to God for this time we have now to be in the moment of process of refinement. And there are some things that I am personally dealing with that Father is showing me. It hasn't been easy. It's been very hard, but that is a part of the process of asking Father to purge us and perfect our hearts. And if we read Romans 7 and 8, Father came so that we can live in righteousness, which is such a very cool miraculous gift if you think about it our flesh our members of our flesh are sinful and they are prone to sin and before christ when one sinned they would go make an offering or sacrifice but now that god gave his only begotten son who came to die for our sins we don't have to you know go kill a lamb we have the ability from our own members to atone and reverse that to repent and steadfast our flesh or our fleshly members to 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 righteousness so that we in the way of spirit and out of our flesh can literally walk and live contrary to our fleshly sinful nature thanks to father we can now live in reverse order by what father did on the cross and 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 now with his spirit in us that's the gift so it's it's not that it's impossible for us to live up to that standard the problem is no one really wants to fully either live up to that standard because flesh is dominant or the lack of awareness one has to really understand what's really in their heart and i'm a work in progress i am at a level where i need more refinement i wouldn't have said that last year and never thought i really needed much refinement but that's pride in itself glory to god to see that now and be truthful about it and i've been open to my own humility of these things thank god it's not like I never had humility. I just lacked it in other areas, which is horrifying because you're only a unknowing hypocrite when you do that. That's why we need to truly ask Father to look within ourselves and for him to expose ourselves to us the way he sees us. But the thing is with most people that they, they, they think they're pretty good and decent like I did. They really do. They, they don't know what's really in their heart. That's really not pretty. For whatever reason, most people don't dig deeper to truly confirm that they are good and really from their heart. They helped a homeless person, which is good, or they they attend church every Sunday. But the odds are we are not going to like what Father reveals about us because he really knows our heart. He really sees beyond the facade we put forth among others in the world. Things that we are overlooking, we have no clue about, or things we don't think we are not that bad in or things we don't realize of how we are acting negative uh, in a way that it exemplifies throughout our behavior or things about us that simply just makes us horrible with no self-awareness of who we actually are because we we tell ourselves or we convince ourselves that we are not bad or not as bad from my own experience i didn't think i was that bad and many of you probably don't think that either but ask father to confirm that to you you're going to be shocked by what he reveals, but accept it to walk right inwardly with him. Father has been blessing me to really reveal much about myself. It's a blessing, but it's a tough reality. It's a blessing because I'm now aware and I'm going to use my free will to deal with it and change with Father helping me by his grace. But it's hard and it's shameful. But these things must be dealt with as hard as it is to face what we really and inwardly are and inwardly have in us but father is showing us but by him we can get rid of it and he will help us through it and we learn from it walking better in the way of the spirit that's what the grind has to look like and be about the lord brings me upon many women to speak to in unequally yoked marriages all the time to try to plant seeds and witness to and encourage them to bear their cross those who have no grounds for a divorce while literally at the same time i'm carrying my own cross of that affliction myself i'm honestly getting beating from the same whip that they are trying to justify and running away from saying to them just bear it and lean on father for the sake of the soul with the one carrying the whip in their hands along with speaking scripture to them as i'm feeling the lash of my own whip across my back and yes the enemy is like look at what you're going through how can you try to tell someone else to go through what you're going through? How can you tell these women to stay and take the same beating you're receiving? And the enemy is planting seeds because if he can get me to leave, the one he already controls won't stand a chance. But he has me to still bear my cross while also praying for his salvation. Therefore, he can still be saved. But love is the answer to it all, brothers and sisters. Love is the key. Life in this walk have shown me that greatly 
I was brought to a place that I, in my own life, in my own way, by my own actions, from what was inside of my heart, was no better than my persecutor. And personally, I was given mercy to the fate of where I could, I, where I, I could be somewhere different right now. I deserve a worse in what I bear now, if not for Father's love, grace, and mercy, and forgiveness upon me. So Father had shown me that, and I, I had love, I have love for Him, for that, and for that I didn't turn away from that knowing. I received it, accepted it, and I, I saw just how loving He has been towards me, and still is, in spite of myself. So, I from that point truly fell in love with Father, and for Him I did what He told me against what I wanted to do, and what was really inside of my heart at the time. So I stayed and I buried my cross and honestly could have not done that without him. But because of love for Father, moreover, exalting my own way, my own feelings, I was able to work on myself and, and learn how to perfect love over time for the one with the whip. And it's still a process, but it's like the scene in my favorite movie, The Count of Monte Cristo, where Edmund Dantes, played by Jim Caviezel, is brought for the first time to the Chateau d'If, the prison, and they beat him. They give him lashes across his back and you hear him yell out in pain from each lash at first. But there's the next scene of that as over time he has come to bear his cross and his predicament and his time of going into the office as time has gone by to get whipped is literally nothing. As you can see him in the scene talking in another in another language because secretly his friend is teaching him French inside of the prison. But he is like going through the motions getting his beatings. He's unmoved by the lashing. He is getting like it doesn't hurt or affect him in every way as it did before even though he has to go through his beating that's how it is for me and that's how it is in christ i was before in agony emotionally spiritually and all of that and and now through christ i'm stronger to take it and even handle it gracefully with forgiveness but i had to learn those things i had to change my heart most importantly and because i love father and, and took his route of going where it would take me down that road I have that testimony yes I slip up and stumble even in this stage and things can get triggered to want to come back up but I know how to handle those situations acknowledgement confession repentance and get back on that horse again and it's not in vain it's not a miserable existence because with all of my heart I want my life to be what father wills for it over what Lena wants for her life that's the key. It's not about you more so than Father in your walk, in your relationship with Him. You're going to learn that. Sometimes the flesh has a grievance with that. Most time it will have a grievance with that because it's 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 fight against every anti-way of the flesh I live for now is a part of my walk. I have to expect that if I'm trying to be pro-spirit, then pro-flesh, like I used to live pro-flesh, and these women I talk to, they want their way. And it's not a bad thing to want peace and happiness and love and a Christian man. But most of them never take into accountability that they chose and accepted their life that, they're, that they live in. In the first place, most of them now want God's, they want God's input on their life now to validate them leaving when they have no biblical grounds. Something they really want to do. And hey, I get it. But one thing you learn in your walk is that it's not about you. It's about Father. If you love Christ, you're going to put him and his will first over your life. Many women live in the reality that they do. But if you ever hear one of them say, God didn't want me to be miserable and suffer like I did. That alone tells you they never put God first. Jesus said we would suffer for his name's sake. When you marry someone who is not a Christian and realize it, come to wake up and realize that upon you becoming a Christian or getting saved or becoming really close with Christ, whatever the case may be. Most of the time you won't you want to leave and even pastors will give many scriptures to run into adultery if there's no biblical grounds for divorce. But how many are willing to stick it out and put their own peace or their own happiness, their own sanity away for the sake of the one who is lost, becoming more in tune with Christ, transforming their hearts, renewing their minds to where they gain happiness and sanity in the Christ like way. Desiring more for the cross so that Father can can save the lost one for his kingdom and for his glory. And I'm here to tell you, there is not many who are willing to do that. But through my prayers, fathers will take, he will take the one lost into account. Because it's about saving souls for his honor and his glory and for the advancement of his kingdom. And that is my happiness. 
If your happiness is when you can finally be happy and fi and have that away from the one you married who is lost, what does that do for the kingdom? How does that glorify God? You can't go on and tell others about Christ and left one lost in Christ. You leave and tell others about God after divorcing someone you chose but can't tolerate the consequences of your choice now while going on to actually think you're still not married. God blessed you out of that marriage because he didn't want you to go through that misery even though you, not he, chose it. While you and an adulterer that you are in a sexual relationship with who is also believing he is in, he is in good standing too, he or she, because unlike the heathen you chose to marry the first time, he is more godly, but both of you are not godly to know you're in adultery. Because you put your feelings over the standard, the word of God. But you believe you're good and happy. It might be. You're unlike the heathen regularly attending church with the with the one you're in adultery with. And life is good. And it's okay. But really it's not. But I'm saying it's okay because Father will have no problem bringing these errors, faults, and sins to your attention later. Because he will do that. He's going to do that with all of us. No one is escaping judgment. I'm in the group, small group at that, of wanting Father to bring everything up to my attention now versus later. So I'm all about transparency and the word of God in this refinement process and age of grace now with a few others along with me. There are many who rather get it later. Most will be surprised because they don't even know it's coming later. A horrifying awakening that makes me utterly cringe. And I'm in the other group. And I know how hard it is facing truth while I'm asking for it myself and wanting it now in the way I have to deal with it and deal with these things about me and in me. It's hard and, and, and working on these things can be through shame, heavy shame, but I have our father. You have father and he is doing what I, I know that he knows I need. Without holiness, none will see the Lord. And he's giving me what I ask for because striving in holiness is the only way. So it has to be a interest to us. That over what we want or what we think we deserve, what we feel has to be a desire for us embedded deep in our hearts. Otherwise, flesh has no problem calling the shots, running the show, and choosing to be God over the true and living God over us. Flesh will cost us. Spirit will save us. Take this into prayer, brothers and sisters. Check yourselves with Father while the age of grace is still over us. I love you all. Shalom.